sisters today, we were given to hear the parable of the feeding of the 5,000. And when we hear this, on first glance, it may seem to us that this is but a miracle of Christ feeding those who were hungry. And it is, truly, one of the manifestations of Christ's grace as God. But if we look a little deeper at today's parable, I think it's just as valid to say that this parable is about our participation in God's saving grace, our participation in bringing food to the hungry, bringing drink to those who are thirsty, bringing clothing to those who are naked, bringing comfort to those who are imprisoned. If we think back to the parable, Christ has been busy about his work the entire day, healing the multitudes, moving among them, teaching them, as he always did when he was present with the people. And his disciples likewise were with him, as always, assisting in his ministry, but also learning from him. And as they came to the end of the day, they noticed that those 10,000 people, because if we count the 5,000 with an add to their number, the women and children who are also mentioned in today's Gospel reading, we understand the number was substantially greater than 5,000. And having come to the end of the day, the apostles know that the people are hungry, that they've been attending on the words of Christ the entire day and need sustenance. And so they beseech the Lord to send the people away, not because they were tired of them, but so that they might have food and drink, that they might refresh themselves. But then we need to think on Christ's words to his disciples at that point. He doesn't say, bring them to me, that I might feed them. He says, give ye them to eat. This is a very clear injunction to his people, not to step back and to allow God to work, but to participate, to bring their offerings to the people that they might eat of the hands of the apostles. This is an injunction to all of us, dear brothers and sisters, as well. This is a call to our stewardship. If we think back to the account of the creation in Genesis, we know that God created all things, and then he handed them into the hands of the pinnacle of his creation, humanity. And he made humanity stewards of all that he had created, that we might safeguard, that we might shepherd, that we might use on God's behalf those things that he had created. And today's Gospel reading is a reminder to us of this injunction, that it is God's to bless, it is God's to increase, it is God's to ultimately save and sustain and feed all of creation. But ours is to participate in that work. Ours is to bring that which God has given to us to safeguard, that God might then, through His divine grace and His power, increase and bless and multiply that which we have brought back to Him. If we think about this parable, we see also that God gave thanks and blessed and prayed. The Gospel reading says, but He did this only after His faithful had brought these things to Him to be blessed. Today's Gospel reading reads on so many levels. We can read this as a type of the Eucharist as well. Because if we think about what we partake of each and every week, we know that God created that which becomes the bread. We know that God created the grapes from which come the wine as well. But it is incumbent upon us to plant. It is incumbent upon us to harvest and to mill and to press and to bake. And only once we have created these things from what God has given us, once we have created the bread and the wine, and once we have brought them into the temple, once the lamb has been prepared, once the chalice has been filled, it is only then that we call down the grace of the Holy Spirit. And as in the feeding of the 5,000, Christ takes that which we bring back to Him, because that which we bring is not ours in the first place, it is His. And we always need to remember this fact, this one simple fact, that what we bring to God is God's already. We are merely acting as the good stewards that He has called upon us to be. But once we bring that bread and that wine, once it is placed upon the Holy Table, once we participate as a people in the invocation of the Holy Spirit, it is then, after we have given thanks on behalf of the people, that the grace of God descends and hallows and sanctifies that which has been placed on the table. Today's Gospel reading speaks to this reality for 
us as well. We might be tempted, dear brothers and sisters, to look upon the Eucharist as a purely symbolic act. But when we see these types of the Eucharist in the miracles of Christ, we have to understand the objective reality in that of which we partake each and every week. We no less than the 5,000 are fed, are sustained spiritually each and every time we come before Christ, each and every time we prepare to partake of the Eucharist. We no less than them are fed and sustained and given life. This also is contained in today's Gospel reading. If we look at today's Gospel reading, the last thing upon which I would like to reflect is that this is a call to action for us. I began the homily by saying that Christ enjoined his apostles to go and to feed. He enjoined them to bring to him what they had and what they collected. He then multiplied and gave to the people. But what is necessary on our part is to answer the call, as did the disciples. There was no back talk. There was no arguing. There was the recognition that what they had was insufficient in and of itself to feed the people. But there was also obedience to God. There was being mindful of that to which they had been called, and then going out and doing it. We see this in the original calling of the apostles as well, where it's related that one by one, they put down what they were doing, and they followed Christ. They didn't question it. They didn't backtalk. They merely obeyed. And so we are called upon to obey, not as automatons, but willingly. Not without reason, but with all of our faculties, the rational and everything else. We are called upon to submit ourselves to Christ. Not to follow blindly, but to of our own free will accept that which he has given to us. How many of us spend our time, our lives, seeking the blessings of God for ourselves, but not seeking to bestow them upon other people? This also we're taught in today's Gospel reading. The apostles gathered what they could, but they shared. They did not partake of the food. They brought it to Christ and allowed Him to multiply it. They gave the first fruits, indeed the only fruits that they had, to God, that He might do with them as He would. How many of us, dear brothers and sisters, are willing to do the same with what we have? God is not telling us here to give our all. He is telling us to give what we have. We should be willing to give our all, should God call us to that. But if we are unable to give our all, then at least we should seek to give that which it is within our possession, to give. And we should do so unstintingly, that others might enjoy the fruits of that with which God has blessed us. May we see all of this and more in today's Gospel reading. May we be willing to do more than sit back and pray for the blessings of God to be bestowed upon others. But may we be willing to dig in, to roll up our sleeves, to get our hands dirty, to participate in the bestowal of those blessings upon other people through our action, through our kindness, through our giving of that which God has so generously shared with us. Throughout the Gospel narrative, throughout the life of the Church, we are reminded that love is always other-focused. Love is never directed inward toward the self. That is narcissism. That is not love. Self-love is a contradiction in terms. Love is always directed at the other. It always seeks the good, the benefit of the other. And when we do that, when we do that without stint, without complaint, even if that complaint is only directed within ourselves, then we allow God to work to the good for us as well. We do not know whether that good will come materially, we do not know that God will see to our every material. But we do know that God will see to those things which are truly needful for us and for our salvation. We tend to conflate the things that we want with the things that we need. And if we want something badly enough, then we must really need it. And when we don't receive it from God, we complain. Because we feel that God has shortchanged us. But if we truly look at our lives, if we truly look at what our needs are, then we will realize that what we need is a much smaller subset of the things that we desire. And the difference between what we need and what we want 
Is that portion of our goods, our lives, our sustenance that we should be willing to give on behalf of others? That they might also be blessed, not with what they want, but with what they truly do need. May we dwell upon these things contained within the Gospels. May we seek always to direct our focus towards others, that in seeing to the needs of others, God might allow others to see to our needs as well. This is the building up of community. And if we all truly were invested in the life and the welfare of our neighbor, then God would see to our needs through our neighbor as well. May God grant us to reflect upon these things, and more than this, to seek to live these things. That through God, we might also participate in the multiplication and the bestowal of his blessings upon others. And that in so doing, we might all, not just us, but all of God's creation, might inherit the heavenly kingdom. Amen. The blessing of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, be upon you always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.